Welcome to Live at Lunch and I have a very special guest with me today which is Cheyenne O'Brien and she's the Road Safety Officer with the Warren Bungle Shire Council and I've had the pleasure of working with Cheyenne on some community projects related to Bike Week last year and this year and so Cheyenne's going to share with you a whole lot more about Bike Week and, and what's coming up. Yeah, definitely. Um, before I talk about Bike Week, though, I'll just uh, give a bit of a better explanation of my role because it's quite hard to... Um, when I tell people I'm a road safety officer, you can just tell the blank looks in their faces. They're like, <laughs> okay, is that traffic control? What is that? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> um, so essentially what are, my position is, is it's part of the local government road safety program or initiative um, where the local government uh, joins up with Roads and Maritime Services and they run behavioural related um, projects to target mm -hmm. risky behaviour on our roads or near our roads um, that are uh, specific to that community, so related to the issues that that community mm. specifically is facing. Right. Um, there are road safety officers all around the state and we all do very different things. Okay, and they're very depending on the shore and, and the community. Depending on the community okay. that you're targeting and mm. your background as well, that has a bit to play with it. Yes. Um, my background is health promotion, so I'm very much That's involved with active. The, yeah, being active, <laughs> yes, and healthy, as well as um, targeting behaviour. So whereas mm -hmm. the road safety officer before me, he would he actually worked for Rose Maritime Services for a little bit. He right. was he was more towards the infrastructure side of it. Okay. And there are, you know, a whole heap of different factors that are involved with improving safety on our roads. Mm -hmm. um, so there is behaviour, right. um, and then there's infrastructure, improving the safety of infrastructure, and then there's enforcement as well. So, And there's a couple of right. road safety officers who have been police officers as well in their time. So, ah, yeah. so there is the enforcement angle. Yes, and it's just it's good <laughs> It's good because we can all work together as well and share mm. what we do and get mm. inspired by it. Yeah. But anyways, I'll go back onto topic. <laughs> No, so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about what I do. And one of my projects is um, Bike Week. Now, um, I've been working with Viv Evans and Girl Guides. And we together, we've been working with um, a whole heap of different community mm. groups and just community members in general. Yes. And it's just a really mm. great way um, to help improve the st sustainability of this project. Because um, when you've got a, the community on board and supporting it, it's more likely to stick around and yes. um, be effective as well. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways, New South Wales Bike Week is celebrated um, every year uh, in September. Um, it's usually mid-September. Um, the dates aren't the same every year. You, they try and go from um, a Saturday through to a Sunday, uh, so that's why the dates change a little bit as well. Right. Um, the only uh, bad thing about the, these dates are it's when magpies are out. <laughs> we could love bike riders. Yes, <laughs> but usually they don't swoop in big groups, yeah. um, and the weather's usually great. It's just yeah, if you're a solo rider, it can be especially a beginner, mm -hmm. <laughs> can be a little bit of a struggle. But um, anyways, uh, so Bike Week was started uh, by Transport for New South Wales, and they're still really do promote it, but they promote it through Roads and Maritime Services. Right. So they have funding, and they feed that funding into Roads and Maritime Services and Roads and Maritime Services are the ones who give out grants to um, communities to promote bike week and get people yeah. active. Mm -hmm. um, and Roads and Maritime Services also provide money for shared paths as well, go up in our communities. So that's been a really big driver over the last five years. Um, in Canberra, we've got a lot of shared paths popping up, and I've when I drive around the state, I've noticed there's a lot of other towns who have got got good new concrete wide paths as well. Yeah. So, what's the specs in terms of a shared path? What does it mean? If someone okay. So, know what that is a shared path is where a cyclist and a pedestrian can both use it. A footpath is where only pedestrians can use it. Um, cyclists under the age of 12 are allowed to use a footpath. Right. Um, a lot of people would probably argue that point, wouldn't they, not yes. being aware? Yes. Yes, that's it. And if you're a beginner cyclist and you're over the age of 12, it um, can be a little bit daunting having to ride on the road. Yes. Uh, so that's why RMS have really gotten behind shared paths so that beginner mm. cyclists over the age of 12 can also cycle on a path off yes. the road. 
And so the more councils do that, the more active people can be That's and it. safely in yeah. the community. Yeah, and it, it, it all, yeah, it improves road safety. There's less people driving that reduces the risk of being involved in a oh, crash. Yes, yes. Um, yes, and then you've got the active aspect as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are, and then there's better, it's better for the environment as well. So yeah, less pollution. People, yeah, burning fuel. Yeah, so burning our own fuel. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so um, there, there are a lot of benefits. And I will talk about the aims of um, Transport New South Wales, um, a foot thing for, sorry, not good for my words right now, um, for Bike Week and the whole reason that they do promote Bike Week. Um, so just before I go into that, um, submissions are usually open in May. Um, so if you want to run an event, um, you can apply um, through so next year. And it happens yeah. each year, doesn't it? It's fairly automatic, isn't that, it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So yeah. the, the dates of when submissions open and when submissions close can change from time to time. Mm -hmm. But as a rule of thumb, they open in May and they yes. close at the end of June. Right, so, so you're in a two-month window there, basically. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and the, the grants that they provide are to promote Bike Week. So they, they don't provide funding for actually running the event uh, for prizes or mm -hmm. for insurance, but they do provide funding to um, promote it through the newspaper, banners, um, radio, any other way that you can promote Bike promote Week. Yeah. But actually running of the event, mm -hmm. um, you'll need this is resources from elsewhere. This is one from... From last year, so that's it hasn't got the right logo on it, but it has last year's logo on it. Yes, so there's so, some drink bottles, that, um, and that's again publicity. So that's yeah, a promotion. Yeah, so that work. that is also a promotion that mm. they funded last year and this year. Um, mm. So yeah, it, it's quite challenging that they only promote, um, they only pay for the promotion. But if organisations or community members work together and are able to get some mm. um, sponsorship from other organisations, then it is it's really useful because the whole community is getting behind it yeah. and um, promoting this event and so it is more likely to be sustainable and effective yes yes <laughs> okay so now um, I'll go into the website I'll show a picture of the website and then we'll actually go on there um, of where you can actually find out information about New South Wales Bike Week and where you can um, apply for a grant as well and I'm just going to paste that and we are going to try and send out a, um, a document as well with a few links as well after the session. Okay, so you should be able to yep. see that and I might close that. Yeah, so uh, with that link in the chat, you can copy and paste that or else in future, if you don't have that link um, nearby, you can just Google New South Wales Bike Week um, and make sure in the Google search engine you click the um, one where the web address has um, transport for New South Wales in it then you'll make sure that you go into the right um, website um, or else you can just go into the transport for New South Wales website and search by quick and it should take you to this page mm -hmm. um, so with this page I'll show you from the top it has um, you, you get, it has information about events that are on this year so if I click into that um, and I'll scroll down so it's got some lovely photos from last year different events there's also a youtube clip um i try to put that on social media it's it's only 16 seconds so it's quite good um yeah. to use and then you come down here and it says find an event near you and so you can just choose the region that you're in and then you scroll down and you can look at what's near you as you can see here we've got girl guides qr code challenge um, on the 16th of September, it's actually the wrong date, it's the 17th. Well, but we that, changed it to fit in with a whole lot of some yeah, other community events. So. That's it. So yeah. anyways, we've got my name, um, phone number and email address there as well. So there's a point of contact that you can, where you can find out about that event. Um, so if you apply for a grant on running a Bike Week event, your name and your contact details will also be put on this page next year. Fantastic. So that's a thing to plan for. Yeah. yeah, so if I go back to um, the New South Wales Black Week website, I'll scroll down and here, is there any chance we can move this to the side a bit more? Yeah, if you, yeah. Maybe I'll move it just here. Sorry, okay. just mucking around a little bit. They won't see yeah. that. <laughs> um, okay, so if you look at the first um, bit of information, it's about what um, Transport for New South Wales um, 
aim to achieve by running bike week. So um, their first one is to increase the use of local cycling infrastructure for transport and recreation. So that is ideally the shared paths shared that paths. are going up yes. everywhere, yep. encouraging people to use get out and use those shared mm. paths because they're, they're quite expensive, so it's good if we can mm. get the community actually using them. Um, provide a safe and secure environment for new and less confident cyclists to improve their cycling skills. This, again, is also involved with the shared paths because it is a safer location for beginner cyclists mm -hmm. to get out mm -hmm. there and learn how to cycle. Educate the community on the importance of road safety and road rules. So this is where people in my position come in. Um, so it's getting out there and talking about shared paths and footpaths and what the different rules are um, and safety as well and how you can be safe when you're out on the road. Um, and also they want to aim to promote cycling as a safe and healthy mode of transport for short trips. So that means walking down to the library from the local grocery store or walking to the pool from work if it's close by rather than driving. Yes. Um, or getting off the bus stop. A couple of stops, stops early. beforehand. Yeah. yeah it's a, and it can be um, with the – it's not just bikes, is it? So it can be scooters yeah. in terms of safety too, you know, and the mobility. That's it. So Everything. this is titled New South Wales Bike Week, but it's not just about bikes. Um, uh, Roads Maritime Services and Transport for New South Wales really want to get everyone out there and being active because mm. there are enormous health benefits. Yes. And it's not only um, reducing your chance of becoming ill or catching disease, not catching, getting disease, yeah. um, it also improves your mental health as well, which is a really big yeah. focus at the moment. It is a fantastic thing for getting your brain to think clearly. That's it. And often we're so busy. Exercise is the first thing to fall off and it's That's actually it. the most important thing. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I've got to, yeah. like my lifestyle right now is incredibly busy because um, I live an hour away from where I work. Yes. So I have 11 hour days um, and then I come home and I've got a treadmill at home so usually it's dark. Right. So I'll go for a quick jog about half an hour and then I, I also study um, a double master's degree outside Whoa, of work. Whoa, double master's. Yeah, wow. so and then, I, <laughs> and then I try and fit uni in afterwards and then, you know, your normal household chores and it's yes. it's really really hard but exactly. I feel like the reason I'm getting through this right now is because I'm going for that half an hour run yes. every afternoon that's really helping yeah and for me um, I've got a little lanyard on which is uh, September so I'm giving myself a challenge of 10,000 steps yeah uh, and a lot of people are right now so a shout out to those who are and even if you're not registered you're participating in the 10,000 steps too. I know quite a few people are yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's that's a great incentive definitely for, for being a part of that. And the bike paths, I actually walked the shared path. Yeah. I was here late um, one evening in town at work and I walked at twilight. I had the most beautiful walk down to Nielsen Park and along oh, yeah. the shared path yeah. along the river. Yeah, so, we're, we're really yeah. fortunate here in Coonabarabra and we've got um, a big bridge, which is part of the main highway. We've got the shared path, which just loops underneath it. And it's just really handy with connecting one side of town to the other without having to cross, cross the highway. Cross the highway, which what it used to be. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Um, mm. Okay, so I'll get back to this. Um, these aims are actually really important. Uh, if you're applying for a grant, um, then Transport for New South Wales or Roads and Maritime Services will look at your goals and see if they match up with their aims. Okay. So they're more likely to fund you if you if your goals are in line with what they want to achieve. Mm. Um, and really, these aims are quite easy to achieve. They're not um, something that's unrealistic and they're very beneficial to the community as well so I strongly mm. support using them there. Um, so if we go further down there's information for event organisers so there's a style guide, um, there's all these different artworks which you can use for media releases, posters, um, uh, letterheads, uh, they've also got a certificate of appreciation template that you mm. can use. Um, so it's all there. It's really, it makes life a lot easier. Um, I've used it. I've definitely used the press release um, template and that was incredibly handy. <laughs> it's just, yes, just fill it in. So, I mean, we've got banners. I saw something in the paper today that's yeah. come out. Yeah. Um, a huge big banner on the street. Yes. And then there's the flyers and then even your PowerPoint we're yeah. using today, the 
great, lovely bike week logos. Or yeah, easy there's a lot easy of ways yeah. you can promote mm. an event. Um, and it's and that's the great thing about this is they only fund promotion, but still there's just so many, many ways you can do that. So, yeah, we've got this huge roadside banner and I love it because it just says supporting an active community. It's just yes. right there as you enter town. So it just kind of get, gets everyone going, oh, right, yes, being active makes you think about it. I spotted it because it only went up yesterday yep. and I saw it right as I, and everyone leaving school. I'm going to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really happy with that. And yeah. I've put it um, one down in the south of the Shire as well. Oh, so. fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, so that's hmm. uh, really handy that they provide that. Um, one thing you have to remember, if you do apply for a grant and you are successful, you have to do an event evaluation report. This is really easy. It's just um, ensuring that you did run the event um, so you'll get your funding. Um, they want to also look at how many people participated and if you reached your goals, which are in line with their aims. So right. they yeah. just want to see if they were, um, if they had achieved um, their aims. Yes. So... Is there any particular, is it limited to certain groups that can apply for the no. grant? No. No, anyone can apply. Schools, um, not-for-profit organisations, mm -hmm. councils like me. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it, if you do get your local council on board and their road safety officer, it does make the process a lot easier just because I am very familiar with applying for grants through Roads and Maritime Services. I do it every year. Yes. Um, so this process was very easy for me. I knew exactly what they wanted to hear. <laughs> um, yeah. And, yeah, so far I've been successful. Um, I can imagine that um, most groups are successful, though, as long as their aims are in line. Gone. And then I suppose it depends on if there's been community collaborations. So say if you're in one town a few people apply and they're not aware of each other. That's where it'd be good to talk to your local yeah. road safety officer, wouldn't yes, it, just to true. see, because they might be aware. Yeah, and then everyone can collaborate as well. Yeah, and that's right. That's what's been really fun about yeah, this, this time, is how much collaboration. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of collaboration mm. here in Coonabarabran for us, but then mm. also I'm working with other towns, so there's been a way and there's cooler. So I've just mm. released a media release showing mm. all the different that's things fun. this shy is doing and how everyone's working together, yeah. so it's awesome. It's fantastic. Yeah, so would you be able to... Get back onto the presentation. Yes, I can. Let's get back to here. There we go. Okay, cool. So uh, now I'll go on to the next slide. Okay. So, because um, I understand that this is a, a live presentation online, so there's um, people who can watch this from all over Australia. Yes. Um, so I've created a slide here to explain that their bike week isn't just celebrated in New South Wales, it's also celebrated in Western Australia, Queensland, and there's an organisation in Victoria that supports events very similar to bike week. Um, so Viv is going to send out straight afterwards a link, um, well, a, a uh, Word a, do document. a document. We're going to try and put a few of these links yeah. to these sites. So you yeah. can go to that website and you can find out um, a bit more information about what they do. But essentially it's the same as New South Wales Bike Week. So in Western Australia, they they provide grants as well and the same with Queensland. Um, and as you can see there, in Western Australia it's run in March, Queensland it's run in May, and then in, for the Bicycle Network in Victoria, they've got events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They also push it throughout Australia as well. So they've got the Ride to School and Ride to Work um, days and they promote that Australia-wide. Australia-wide. So some things we could be tapping into is those dates. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, it's sort of exciting yeah. for families and community groups and people like organisations like Girl Guides. Yeah. And what could be fun is that you could go, you could start off in Western Australia in March, head to Queensland, do the Victorian stuff in between, yeah, and then come back to New South Wales. Yeah, so go on a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> a Viking road trip. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, one thing I do have to note, though, is Bicycle Network, they don't provide grants, but they do provide resources. Mm -hmm. So if you want to um, work with them in promoting one of their events, then they'll provide you with posters and other useful resources that you Fantastic. can use. So, yeah, worth worth considering and, and working out when they are and have been part of the yep. community. Yeah, yep. right. And I've provided a link with which what will be sent out as well after yep. the presentation on that. Brilliant. Okay, so back to New South Wales Bike Week. So there's a whole heap of different events that are running, as you saw when we went onto that website. Um, so there's fun rides, there's competitive rides, and there's bike workshops. But we're doing something a bit different, which yeah. we're really excited about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're doing is the Coonabarabra Girl Guides QR Code Challenge. 
So essentially what you're looking at is a waterproof poster um, that we've purchased okay. off Vistaprint. We're putting 14 of these posters up around um, popular walking and cycling routes in Coonabarabra. And as you can see there, it's one of them. You can see the size of it, it's actually quite big, so it'll be very easy to spot. <laughs> And then we can put them in, uh, and put them up with cable ties around town. Yeah, mm. and because it's waterproof, it will um, be longer lasting. Because last year we did a QR code challenge, and um, we used laminated paper. paper. Yeah, laminated paper, and it didn't quite work. It wasn't as strong, so we've stepped up. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and use the promotional um, resource. Yeah, that's to, it to help us get some better banners. Happening. Yeah, so that's another way you can also mm. use the grant money. Um, so before I go into what the actual QR code challenge is, I want to first explain what a QR code is for those who don't know. So essentially, a QR code is like a barcode that you can just scan with your smartphone. Um, and here on with the picture on your left, you can see that it's um, on a plant label so you can scan that and get information about that plant um, when's the best time to plant it and the areas where it will grow best and, and that sort of useful information um, in the middle picture there is a promotional banner and there's a QR code at the very bottom so you can scan that and find out about that promotion so it can be used for marketing. Um, and then in the far right, you can see with the food product where there's a QR code, you can scan that and find out more about that um, food, that product and the actual food label and what's in it. Yeah, so QR stands for quick response and it's about finding, getting to something really quick and it's like a barcode or just like a web link address. So if the phone picks it up, Every one of those little squares like you see on the plant label, they're all slightly different with their dots and shapes on it and that takes you, the, the program reads it on your phone or on your tablet and takes you to that particular space. So we could lead you to um, videos, all sorts of resources, but basically it's going to some web address that's on the internet. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So yeah. your um, interaction with it can be completely different. So from your left there with gardening, that can just be to a website, whereas in the middle, that where that can take you can be completely different. It could be Facebook, it could be YouTube. Yeah, it could be anything on the internet. And it saves you actually punching into your phone an address. So say if you read it and you were typing it in, it would take you forever, you don't do it. But if your phone can actually pick it up, quickly read it, yeah. quick response, yeah. and it goes, it goes it straight to it. Yeah, so it's a very useful tool. Hmm. Um, in a wide range of fields. So um, how do you actually scan a QR code? Um, it's, you need a smartphone and you can get an app from either the Play Store on your Android phone or through um, the App Store. So it's quick and easy. You just go onto um, the Play Store or the App Store and you type in QR code scanner and it is showing Oh, so apps. this is, yeah, you can't quite read it, but that red one's my QR code reader. Yeah. yeah, so um, you just search for QR code scanner, a whole heap will pop up and they're pretty, they're free. Yeah, some aren't, some aren't, so go for the free ones, yeah, that's go, all you need. And they're, yeah, yeah they're really easy to use. So um, it's quick and easy to download and then once you've downloaded it, um, as you can see in this picture <laughs> with this phone, there is a square shaped line marking. You just make sure the QR code is inside that square and then it'll read it and it'll take you to wherever you're meant to go. Yeah. And it's amazingly quick how, it, how easy it is that it'll just, you know, sometimes you just line your phone up and, go even, and then all, all of a sudden yeah. you're there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now we'll go back to um, the Coonabarra Wing Girl Guides QR code challenge. So essentially we've got 14 banners um, all over the popular walking and cycling routes of Coonabarabran and people can just scan the QR code and it will take them off to um, a website where they'll be given information and they, they will have to do an activity. Um, so our main theme uh, for Bike Week is to get active, active yeah. and then stemming from that from that theme, a whole heap of different topics. So here you can see um, with the picture on your right, it's about active transport. Um, so what you'll see, you can see here with the picture on your right is quite zoomed out and you probably can't read the wording. Um, it's because I've just taken a screenshot and then I've had to zoom right out. Um, yeah. When you get it on your phone, it, you'll read the words clearly and you just scroll down. 
So that's essentially two pages that you're looking at right now with that picture. Um, so here with this challenge, uh, as an example, it's about active transport. It explains what active transport is. And also um, there's a infographic from the Heart Foundation where it explains reasons why you should ride. And at the bottom, um, there is a question where you can answer and you write what your reason is to um, be active. And then at the very bottom, where there's another green title, green and white title, um, that's other types of active transport. And there's a very, um, there's a question down there. I'll <laughs> try and read it. It's about sharing your ideas, um, um, ways you can be active. So that is getting off a bus stop beforehand, those sort of ideas. Um, the whole idea of this is, uh, once you submit it, then you can go and you can look at what everyone else has written. So um, for the last question on sharing your ideas of being active, you can see what everyone else has written and you can be inspired, I suppose, and, yes. and see other ways you can incorporate active transport into your lifestyle. Mm. So this each topic, each QR code's got a slightly different topic, hasn't it? Still, Still underneath and yeah. being active for Bike Week. Yeah. yeah, so this is just a, one example and we've also got topics on mobility scooters, um, road safety, activities to do in Coonabarabran. Yes, what I love about Coonabarabran. So we've, yeah. And then we've got um, going down to the rotary equipment yep. and then trying to do your personal best. Yep, so there's a competitive one. You've <laughs> got to beat everyone else. <laughs> and, and then there's another one asking about um, and, and get some get a drink bottle, a yep. bike week drink bottle. That's so it, that's yeah. part of the part yeah. activity. So we've got 14 really different ones. Oh, and a physio tip yes. for exercise and, and stretching. So, and we've got uh, the Girl Guides ha actually had a visitor for, we had Cheyenne and, and an active bike rider, Max Estens, and they came around and spoke about bike safety. So we're sharing that, that um, so we've, we've done live events and we've recorded those and then they'll be part of, of the learning and the communication between yeah. those challenges. That's it. So here mm. we've got infographic and in other ones there are videos instead of the infographic. Um, so they're all very different. Um, one thing I would like to note is when you do submit your answers, you're completely anonymous. So no one will see who has submitted those answers. They'll just see the answers as well. Um, so you don't have to worry about other people um, seeing your name. Um, and we're, we've used a program called Google Drive as part of this program. Mm. And so we're linking the QR code to, the, to that Google document. And, and down the track, we're planning to change. We want to have it that the, the QR code banners can move as well as the challenges on them will change. So we're going to sort of, we were open to people asking us about theme, offering themes. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so right now we've got Bike Week, so we're making it active theme. Um, and then coming up in the future, there's a whole heap of different ones. Like hmm. There's Book Week, there's... Um, yeah, astronomy. Yeah, the focus for Coonabarabran on yeah. astronomy. Uh, so there could be all sorts of questions about history or space or all sorts of things. Yeah. So we're hoping it'll be quite an engaging, changing challenge yeah. that, that'll keep going for the community. So then being a sustainable project. That's it. So mm -hmm. um, if you're in Coonabarabran and you've got ideas or would like to work with us on um, doing a whole heap of different activities around the community after Bike Week, mm -hmm. we really want to hear from you. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so this is my last slide. Um, I've put this up. It's just our flyer for um, the Girl Guides QR Code Challenge launch for this year. So in Coonabarabran, um, on Sunday the 17th of September, uh, we'll be working with Hell Yeah Sports and Activities um, where they will be doing a bike workshop in the morning at um, the Coonabarabran Activity Centre yes. on 61 Delgano Street. Um, so that starts at 930 uh, so they'll do the bike workshop and then they'll put on a barbecue lunch in Jumping Castle and then um, at 12.30 we'll do the Girl Guides QR Code Challenge with everyone who's completed the bike workshop. Yeah, um, fantastic. And, we'll and there could even be people going on foot for that. So if you don't have a bike, you can come down and, and join in anyway and participate yeah. because it doesn't matter what form of active transport That's it. you're on. Yeah. So we <laughs> encourage everyone to come down. Um, beginner cyclists are welcome. Um, Anyone's able to come down, even if you don't have a bike, you've got a skateboard or a scooter. Um, but if you do have a recreational device on wheels, um, then please bring your helmet. Mm -hmm.
And so that's, Very good. that's my presentation. Fantastic. Thanks, Cheyenne. And I thought what we would do, we would finish off with a bit of active. I was trying to look for a bike exercise, but I ended up finding another sort of activity, which is swimming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we're going to do is it's like we're doing breaststroke. So you can sit, um, and we don't need water for this, it doesn't matter about how cold it is. <laughs> We're indoors. So I want you to press your palms together in front of your chest, and then with your fingers pointing out, keep your palms together and straighten your arms in front, and then rotate your palms. I want to see if I can get that on the camera, and then go back around like you're doing breaststroke. So bring it right in. And this is really improving your shoulder. You can feel it. I can it. feel it. Hey. <laughs> wow. Increases your range of motion. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to get where we are. We've got our chicken wings coming out. But really, um, really good. So if you do that about 10 times, and you can do this exercise at any time at your desk. Yeah. And, uh, and stretch it out. So really scoop your hands like... Um, you do. I, I love. It's my favourite swimming straight. So I'm, yeah. I, I like this exercise. <laughs> fantastic. So have have a fantastic uh, week. Remember, Bike Week kicks off on the 16th of September. But there's there's no reason why you can't uh, join in other activities. You know, and be fit and active at other times of the year. Now, just I've got a sneaky little. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Let me come up to here. What I wanted to share with you is that haven't actually got, we have this link coming up, so we've got Bike Week. A really interesting and very different presentation we've got coming up on the 28th is I've got a special guest, uh, Wendy Dumeray, and she's talking about thriving through menopause. So if you're getting to that stage, She's got some fantastic tips to help you start getting your midlife mojo back. And I encourage you to go to this, uh, their events page on vivianevans.com.au and register now to get that information. So fantastic. Okay, thanks very much, Cheyenne, yeah. for being my guest today. That's all right, thank you. And everyone have a fantastic and brilliant week. See ya. Bye. <laughs>